Cool. All right. I'm. Uh, should I now? Can I start now? We're we good. Is it action? All right. So we're talking the 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 big stuff at camp today. We're talking all camp activities. We're talking uh, we're talking hype. We're talking uh, story. We're talking exposition. Right. What I when I think of all camp activities, how how I want to kind of how I want us to kind of even think about it today. Right. Um, we're gonna get into it a little bit with uh, a Mentimeter. Um, if some of you have seen Mentimeters before, we'll start talking about Mentimeters um, and to get us started. But Right. I want us to take a quick second and just think about this. I want you to think about either your favorite movie or your, your favorite book or your favorite video game. Um, I want you to think about uh, your favorite like uh, sport that you that you that you like to play, your favorite uh, social experience with your friends, like any of those things. Just think about your favorite thing right now. And like, all right, we're going to take like 10 seconds. I'm going to count down on my fingers here. Take 10 seconds and, and find some sort of memory or some sort of passion that you have that like just brings a lot of joy to you um boom mine's gonna be video games i'm gonna i'm just gonna go right ahead and say like mine's gonna be video games i'm gonna count down on my fingers here okay now that you got that now that you got that i want you to uh we're gonna we're gonna start to dissect it but just in our heads just in our heads i want you to think about what specific part about that specific thing right either the movie or the video game or the the social experience right what about it what happened before you actually experienced that like what what was the lead up to you actually being able to partake in that like whatever experience or that that favorite um article or enjoyment right so we're gonna think about that for seven seconds all right now i want you to think about uh what specific part like think about the entire experience as a whole and then think about what actual one specific part about it that was like yeah this is dope like yeah this i would come back and do this again like let's go right and like for me in video games that might be like uh like the the boss fight uh at the at the end of the level right and it's like you're so majestic that might be the thing for me um all right so we're thinking about that for five seconds all right and the last thing i want you to think about and we're only gonna think about this for like another five seconds um before we get into this mentimeter is how did it end? And like, what did you feel at the ending of that? Like when it was all over, what like feelings were you left with? Cool. All right. So what I want to tell you right now is what you just created in your head was an all camp activity. Hands down, what you, that, that entire series that you just went through, right? What you just did in your head um, for your favorite book or your favorite, uh, your favorite movie or your favorite, um, uh, video game, whatever it was, you just created an all camp activity. And we're going to, and throughout the course of like this next 90 minutes, we're going to figure out how to turn whatever your favorite thing was that you just did into a thing, into a, into an all camp activity. Right. And that's pretty much how all camp activities work. They start with something that we're interested in. They start with something that we're passionate about. And then we build around it to, to, to figure out how we can encompass so many other people. Um, that's how, that's literally how everything starts. That's how uh, Lord of the Rings started. Somebody was interested in like towers and, and dwarves and dragons and swords. Somebody, that's how Harry Potter started. Somebody was interested in, in magic and wands and, and, and fantasy and, and three-headed dogs and stuff like that. That's, that's, how, that's how all like things that encompass a lot of people's the house they start is with that one small interest. And I'm going to give you a lot of examples about that throughout that. But first we're going to get into some Mentimeters and we're going to actually share with everyone um, some of these favorites that we have. But before we get started with Mentimeter, I think it'll be good to, if you haven't used a Mentimeter before, get some practice. Do we all know our, uh, are we like Harry Potter fans? Do we all know our Harry Potter houses? If you do, type them in the chat, let's go. Sunshine, I love when people admit that they're in Gryffindor. I feel like it's like Gryffindor gets a bad rap. It's like, oh, yeah, you think you're the main character. It's like, shut up. I'm in Gryffindor. It's, it's like, nah, man. I'm just hype as shit all the time and confident in my bullshit. Like, <laughs> Harry Potter is not brilliant like any Ravenclaw person. Like, no one in Gryffindor is brilliant like that. They're just going to do the thing that they want to do. Yeah, they're just because like a little bit like, obnoxious. Yeah, they're just like a little bit obnoxious and ready to go. And I love yeah. when people are admitting, uh, ready to admit it. All right, here we go. No, wait, what's this? 14, 19, 18, 3. I got to put that in the chat. Awesome. Right. So if you if you haven't used a Mentimeter before, uh, you're going to go 
it's really simple. You can use your phone. You can use uh, just another tab. You can open it. Uh, you're going to go to menti.com and then you're going to see something that says type in the code. You're going to type in the code 1419183. Um, and then uh, we're going to answer the question, which is the question is, what is the best camp food, right? And I, I, uh, uh, I want to let you guys know there is a right answer. There's no wrong answers, but there, there is a right answer. Uh, we'll, we'll love you if you, whatever, for whatever you choose, but we will love you a little bit more if you get the right answer right now. <laughs> Boom, we got, okay, we got the cookout going. We got grilled cheese. Um, also, let's see how many people we have in here. One, two, three, four, five. Boom, we got a nice little group here. We got like, what, eight, 10 people? All right, boom. All right, we got the grilled cheese coming in. Okay, it's pretty much just a tie between grilled cheese and cookout. I will let you know that the right answer was dino nuggets. So uh, I feel like dino nuggets never get enough love. You know, I feel like uh, dino nuggets are like entertainment and, and a meal at the same time, right? You can put a whole puppet show with dino nuggets. You don't have to actually eat them. They could just become like a pet. I don't know. You can do whatever you want. I guess you could do the same thing with like a burger or grilled cheese. I mean, uh, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's just get us a little practice using uh, the Mentimeter right here uh, so that you kind of understand that where everybody's locked in here. We got the cookout winning uh, four or three. Uh, I am curious, right? What's your, what is your favorite cookout meal? Is it the burgers? Is it is it like the uh, the hot dogs? Is it going to be that the, the mac and cheese, maybe the watermelon, the snacks on the side? Uh, what is it? Or maybe it's that nice cool uh, lemonade and, and, and uh, Hawaiian punch that you got going on there. I don't know. Um, boom. All right, let's see if I can. Menti is like the only one that actually gives me oh let's go i can just hit the arrow boom all right so this one is an open-ended question uh they're gonna be anonymous so like no one's gonna know uh who wrote what uh that's kind of how menti works uh you, you and what's gonna happen is this open-ended question uh the question is what is your favorite all camp activity that you've been a part of Also, let's go, Marissa. Ravenclaws unite. Let's go. Seventy percent of Ravenclaw. We're in there. All right, let's go. We got what? Real life Pokemon. Let's what? Let's. All right, so we got skits in a bag. Real life Pokemon. Mario Party themed. Hold on, it's blocking the camera. Mario Party themed storyline activity rotations. Gold Rush with costumes. Pirates, witches, water guns, teamwork, and trolls. Gold rush with costumes, pirates, witches, water guns, teamwork, and trolls. Yo, Nelson, I know you said it was anonymous, but if whoever put that in did want to take three minutes and explain that, we would all probably appreciate it. And then <laughs> maybe we might could steal it. I agree. Um any takers on that one? Anyone want to claim that? No? Yes? It was me. Can y'all hear yeah, me? Come on, Marissa. Let's What's go, good? My fellow, okay. my fellow Raven call. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Um, so it's actually not an activity I created, but my um, former camp director did. But we had Gold Rush, and she had like a whole theme and story alongside it. And so um, it was a collaborative activity. So it's competition, but also collaborative. So all of the, we had a bunch of rocks that all had a number written on them. And if it had six, then it meant six people had to carry that rock to bring it back to their space. If it had 12, they had to have 12 people. If at three, it could be three people, that sort of thing. So sometimes they had to even, it was, we had two teams, um, a red team and a green team. And sometimes they even had to work with the other team to be able to get it. And then those went in the middle and they counted points for both teams. And so it was a way to have like this all camp giant wild thing. And then there were um, some sideline stories where there was, trolls that like could um had different like activities where they could uh you had to go to the witch to learn a riddle to go to the troll to get access to like where a lot of extra gold coins were and the witches had riddles and things like that um there were pirates that if they had water uh squirters and if they um if you got wet you had to go to like a timeout area and we had people in costumes there and you had to like sing or dance to get out of um, essentially like the timeout jail area. That's a terrible word for it, but that area of it. And so it was like, no matter what was going on. And then the witch could give you like the shield of invisibility 
And if you were carrying that, then the pirates couldn't get to you and you could carry as many gold coins as you wanted. So it was like this very elaborate all camp activity with roles and the counselors were dressed up in ridiculous costumes and all the kids, even if they were athletic or not athletic or whatever, they were all into the game and um, active and collaborating together. So they were all excited about winning points for their team, but they had to work with the other team even to get points for some of those like big ticket, like the 20, 20 people have to help carry this rock. So they have to literally walk across camp as a hurdle of 20 people to be able to get points for the rock. So that Hell was- yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. That sounds lit. That sounds like a, a whole bunch of fun. It sounds like there was like the competition aspect and also uh, it's like so cool when you can have a competition, but also it's like in order to win the competition, you also have to work together. Um, I love that. I love that. And also it, it, it like, I would call them even uh, like those side quests on the, on the sides, right? The, the like getting the, getting the witches, uh, the cloak of invisibility is like a side quest where it's like, you don't have to do it, but like, it's kind of cool when you, you definitely want that cloak of invisibility. Cause I'm trying to, I'm trying to carry all the coins. Let's go. Um, absolutely. So some other ones we've gotten here are uh, our camp has a themed Olympics weekend, every session, a whole weekend activity. Let's go. Uh, the fave was aliens came to camp via time travel and had to pick the best era. Let's go. Right. Well, like, so like, like eighties, nineties, um, things like that. Um, casino night. Uh, we have something we call a special day in one year. It was election day. We, <laughs> we had two counselors running for forks and spoons. The kids rebelled and elected sporks. <laughs> that's the best. They even inserted themselves in the debate activity. Absolutely. That's like one where everybody can get involved and even like it, the solution, like the ending was like something you might not have been expected. Um, and then you have zombie apocalypse and color war. Absolutely. All right. So uh, now I want you guys to remember what you guys wrote because it's going to help you on the next question on the Mentimeter here is, and this, this question is essentially could be see it said in one word, but here we go. Uh, what specifically about that activity made it so special? Why, why is that your favorite activity? So what's what's actually special about having a, a, a president with sporks and forks and spoons or or color day or All right, so we got buy-in from the campers and staff. We have an immersive storyline. Seeing the mix of competition and intentional collaboration, uh, campers autonomy um, or the power to kind of choose what they do and camper rebelling, it changed how we ran special day ever since. Uh, it was unique and applied specifically to uh, something that kids in our entire age range knew and campers working together to win prizes. It was really creative and executed well. All right, let's, uh, I think we, one more, one more is coming in soon. Yeah. No, I think we good. Cool. Awesome. Well, definitely, if you want to uh, throw in those uh, last couple there. Um, but uh, right, and from what, all, what I'm seeing right now is uh, one, it sounds like uh, there's already some. Uh, incredible experiences to be had, right, that we can all learn from. And I think we're going to spend some time learning from each other um, in terms of like what makes these, these all chem activities so special. Um, and we're seeing things like buy-in, right, buy-in and creating that, that intrigue, that, that interest right there. We're going to talk about that quite a bit. Uh, that immersive storyline, right, that expo exposition, that immersion, uh, like what, what fantasy are we creating? What, what world are we creating in this all chem activity that makes it um, so special, right? Um, as well as uh, I like, uh, again, like that, that autonomy, right? The, the power of choice um, definitely comes into uh, making all camp activities right there. 
um, as well as uh, the execution, right? The, uh, that's like a part that uh, might not be the like the like the the sexy part about alchemy activities is the logistics, right? What actually like what do we have to think about? Like how do we make sure that it runs smoothly and everybody knows what's going on and it's not just like a confused uh, jumbled mess is also a big part of like creating these alchemy activities um, that we want to think about. Um, so we're gonna cover all of that stuff um, in the next couple of uh, like hour or so that we're together. Um, but it sounds like to me, right? It sounds like to me, Jack, that we already got a group of people that kind of have a good grasp on like what all camp activities kind of go in to make them special. Um, so we're gonna kind of probably just more so work on uh, giving uh, like tangible things that we can do to like really just up our game um, and kind of bring uh, 110% to the all camp activities that we do this summer. Yeah, let's freaking go. And I'm gonna give you a, a chance to answer this question later. I want you to think about it right now and then we'll come back to it in a second. But we're gonna do like a quick presentation on some thoughts that we have around kind of the three big keys to um, all camp activities. And then we're gonna be able to do some breakout rooms. We're gonna be able to do some stuff where we're gonna get some conversation going. But I want you to think about, would you rather later, like you don't have to decide now to be thinking about this. Would you rather kind of have it be more of like a show and tell where we're all sharing some of the things that we've all done and we can steal from those ideas and share with each other. Maybe people, some people have like write-ups of their games and we can like put them in a group chat or something like that. Um, or would you rather kind of invent some new stuff a little bit together so you're going to be borrowing from your ideas, but kind of like trying to, to be a little bit collaborative on that. So I want you to think about that. I'll ask you about it later. You do not have to decide right now. Um, all right. So when, uh, when Nelson and I got together to start talking about um, how we wanted to talk about this, we, we wanted to talk about the three keys to great games. I'm calling them games. They're not all games, but great all camp activities because games is a shorter word and it fit in my slide better. Um, so uh, the three of them are uh, mechanics, story, and hype, right? So the mechanics are those little things that are gonna be added together to make a game, right? So when, um, uh, I'm trying to remember who said it earlier, I can't remember who said it earlier, but when you were talking about the rocks and the fact that they had a three on them or a five on them or, or whatever, the mechanic there is you need some people to pick up these rocks to be able to move them somewhere. Or a mechanic in Capture the Flag is when you get tagged, you have to go to the, like respawn point, right? The respawn point is a mechanic. And when we think about these activities, really what they are is a collection of these mechanics combined into a story. So um, like when we were talking about the, um, uh, uh, what, what was it? The, um, uh, the traveling through time, people came back in time to figure out like where we, what era was the best, right? The story, is that they were traveling through time and they came back, whatever. It doesn't actually matter. It could be a totally different story and have almost the exact same game, right? Um, and it's fine. You can do that. Um, it's kind of like in um, like Fortnite or whatever. You can put a different skin on it and it can be the same game, right? Um, and then the last thing that makes um, these games really, really work is the hype, right? Like when you come into a game, I could lead a game like this yeah, so we're going to play Capture the Flag today, and everybody. And if that's how the whole freaking group is going, then, of course, the game is not going to be as fun as if you, if you come in in a costume, covered in paint, riling, riling out, being like, all right, y'all, here's what we're going to do today. We've got Capture the Flag, and this is how it works. And then you do this whole thing, right? So when we combine um, great mechanics that make sense with a good story, and then we bring that hype, that is what's going to make what's going to make these games um, really successful, right? So let's let's look at at capture the flag from the perspective of um, first of all, that's Nelson. Look at him, look at him right there, picking up picking up a tennis ball. Yeah, there he is, there he is. Um, so this game uh, uh, of capture the flag here um, is uh, three way capture the flag. That's what's happening on this field right now. Three way capture the flag, and um, in capture the flag, you get your team gets one point for returning a tennis ball to your side, and there's tennis balls spread out all over. You can't pick up the tennis ball on your side. You have to go to the other side, and you get 20 points for grabbing a flag, which is a pool noodle. And you got to grab the uh, pool noodle 
and bring it back to your side. If you get tagged, you've got to go to a center point and in the center of the, the capture the flag area, you've got to do a dance or whatever to get out of the respawn point, And then you go back into the game um, like that. Nelson, I don't remember in this version of capture the flag, what the um, theme was, but will you make up a quick story for what might oh, could absolutely. be happening? Absolutely. Uh, all right. Um, I think I'm going to go off of one of the, the themes that I saw that we put in there. It was like real life Pokemon. We're going to play Pokemon capture the flag. Right. So we have, we have, all right. So it's, it's uh we're in the Johto League. We got we got three teams all vying to be the Pokemon master. We got we got the 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 red Charizards, we got the blue war turtles, and we got the yellow. I'm not even gonna do uh something as simple as Pikachu. What's like another uh yellow or like we got the green slithers? That's what we're gonna go or scythers, right? We're going we're going old school. I only know the first 151, so like that's what we that's what we're working with. Uh all those new dark Y platinum, all that. I don't know. Uh so we got we got these three teams and they all have a mascot. Right, so Charizard's there. We got World Turtle dressed up, and we got and we got Scyther there going Scyther, Scyther, all that stuff. We got them going. Um, and uh, we now have the the Johto League champions here, and we're on display, and we're trying to see how much how many Pokemon's you can catch uh, in the next thirty minutes. And if your team gets all the Pokemon to catch, um, then you're going to be the champion. However, that's not that's not all because you know we're not we're not we're not shallow Johto League Pokemon masters. So it's not all about the Pokemon. It's not all about that, right? So we're going to have to make sure that you're also a good upstanding citizen of our community. So like if you do get tagged on the other side, you're going to have to go visit Nurse Joy um and and Nurse Joy is going to be in the center and you're going to have to impress Nurse Joy with like some sort of dance. I don't know what Nurse Joy is going to want, but we're definitely you're definitely going to have to do that and if you want to get back into the game, but also if you do, you might get some bonus points. Nurse Joy might throw out some bonus points because nurse joy also has uh master balls that'll help you out right and if you have a master ball then you're like immune for like the next 30 seconds so you're gonna be good you're gonna be good you're gonna be able to catch all the pokemon that you want and that's gonna be our theme we got pokemon we got the mascots going on everybody and you got clear colors everyone has their stuff um and we're gonna have uh we're, are you the very best do you want to be the very best the best there ever was define them as your real test we're not gonna train yeah. them today but we do have a cause, right? That's 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 the theme of, the, of Catch the Flag. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's Catch the Flag, right? Everybody, how many of y'all have played Catch the Flag at your camps before? How many of y'all play um, something sort of like what Nelson just described? A little bit, like a little bit silly. And there's the other way to run it is like you just go less story, more hype, and just hardcore mechanics, right? That's how that's what basketball is, if you think about it, right? basketball is a lot of hype who cares about the story except that you know Steph's going to get his next ring this year and then uh, and then uh like and then you got really good mechanics like basketball to be honest probably has a lot better mechanics than most of the camp games that I play um so you know you can play with those kind of things okay here's what I want to do I'm going to do breakout room for five minutes and what I want you to do you're going to have three four people in your breakout room what I want you to do is Use capture the flag as an example. And I want you to try and make it more inclusive for the folks that maybe Mike could not like capture the flag. So I want you to change the mechanics, maybe change the story, maybe change the hype and use Nelson's version of capture the flag and try and make it more inclusive for more people. Now you're gonna have to figure out what the hell does inclusive mean? Who maybe doesn't like capture the flag? That's on you. You're gonna have to think about it, right? But we all know that there are people that don't like Capture the Flag. And I want you to think about how to keep the best parts of Capture the Flag for the people that love it while making it inclusive for the people that might could not like it as much. You're going to have five minutes. We will force you back. So you can stay in your rooms until you get forced back. It's, a, it's the magic of Zoom. Good. Okay. Okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you. I need all the people in one breakout room to make a fist. Wait, no talking though. And then all the people in another breakout room to make a, an open hand. Ready, set, figure it out. Oh, okay, okay. A little cheating because sunshine went so fast. I see how it works. Sorry. Uh, played, played the same before. It's not cheating. It's just trying really hard, and I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, so uh, give me my my hand, people what what it, give, give us a breakdown you've got um you're gonna get 20 seconds on the clock um who gil, gil will you volunteer 
You can say no, really. And oh, I, I can volunteer. <laughs> okay, you got 20 seconds on the clock. Uh, Nelson, will you hold up 10 seconds? You'll be the first you. 10 seconds, and I'll be the second 10 seconds. Let's go. Okay, you got 10 seconds. We got a lot of good seconds. ideas. So this is going to be hard. Okay, ready, set, go. Um, we talked a lot about like building in those like side quests or those like sedentary activities that still contribute to the active game. Um, so like for this example, um, Sunshine brought up a good idea of like if you tag someone, then you have to do um, like a handshake before you can return or like you could have people who are collecting balls or moving balls or helping judge that like middle dance part. Um, and then we also talked about what else did we talk about? I feel like that was sort of it, but like front loading that information and making sure that everyone knows they have those choices before the game even starts. Hopefully oh, okay. that was a good job. That was okay. <laughs> okay. I love that. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Gail. And you're coming to us from British Columbia. Is that correct? Yeah. Canada. Woo. Oh, let's go Canada. Okay. I love that. Um, I, uh, I was almost born in Canada, but then my, my grandmother said that she didn't trust the socialist uh, um, healthcare system. It shows how, how different the world is. Um, That's hilarious. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, but I did go to senior kindergarten in uh, in in Port Colborne, Ontario, which was uh, they have a junior kindergarten, a senior kindergarten. I graduated. It was a big deal for me. Um, all right, from my my uh, my my people with the closed fist world. Um, what uh who 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 who's up there who's up there give me give me i need a volunteer do, 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 do. oh okay oh okay marley i need you uh you're you're gonna get 20 seconds as well nelson this time i'm gonna be the first 10 you're gonna be the second 10 ready set marley Okay, people who can't or don't want to run around could do um, be nurse choice helpers and like have something that they need to give to the campers to help them like get out of their whatever needing to heal. Um, we could have a cheer squad, bonus points for team spirit, and that could be like a side quest for kids who don't want to run around. If you are like not into the hype, you could have an art competition such as like making posters based on the theme or a costume for the mascot. You could also split tasks based on camper age. That's what we got. All right. Um, Let's go. I, I like I like I, the uh I like this the one at the end too the like the split task between like like age or even like interest. I, I love that. Okay, follow up question now. Let's open. That's open floor. Open floor time. This one you just can jump in whenever you want. Um, my friend Nelson likes to do this thing where he says, "If you have a, a, an idea that you might could maybe might say, just start saying it, and it's going to be great. Then we'll figure it out." Okay. So, um, it, why do you think we don't tend to run capture the flag, and maybe you already do, but like in general, there's lots of activities like capture the flag that don't have these additions that we're having? Like, what's the downside of some of the stuff we just added? Can you ask that question again? What, what's the downside or why wouldn't we add some of the stuff that we just added? Got it. Um, it could, sorry. <laughs> Good, you got it, Daniel, let's go. It could overcomplicate it, um, or maybe if you don't have enough staff to supervise everybody, it just kind of spreads you guys out too thin, um, and it becomes then it becomes extra stressful on your counselors to make sure everything is running okay and there aren't any issues coming up. Yep, definitely uh, can overcomplicate it both from the kids' perspective on like what the hell is this game we're playing, and then um, from a staff perspective, like if there's more stuff going on, it's harder to do a good job at the smaller number of things. Could be like obviously if we have the staff. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think you'll always have those campers that want like a cut and dry answer, and they're super competitive, and they're like, "No, if I get the flag, I win," and that's just how they like to play the game. That's how they've played it maybe at school with their friends, and when they come to camp, and it's more inclusive of everyone even though they might not be the fastest runners it might just deter them because it's just not what they're used to um yeah i i love that so how many of y'all consider yourself like like um 
competitive in sports things. I, I definitely, I'm, I'm raising my hand, not just to, to demonstrate, but just also because this is true for me. How many of y'all consider yourself like competitive in like, um, like board games or other kind of like um, video games, things where it's like, you're not moving that much. Maybe it's brain powered or, or these kind of things competitive in that way. No, like yeah, I'm competitive in all things that I participate in period. I'm trying to win. Um, okay. How many of y'all are like, yeah, usually no matter what I'm doing, I'm like just trying to have a good time. I don't really care that much about winning. It's like about having fun. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. So um, two things. One, we, we use a term, Nelson and I use a term called redlining. Um, and basically the idea is when someone is going too hard, you can be like, yo, Nelson, you redlining right now? Because the point of this game is like to have fun with kids. And it, it so happens that Nelson and I both redline sometimes, right? Like that we just go, we go hard. And like, we're like, oh yeah, no, nah, actually it doesn't, I don't need to be bowling over this kid that when I grab the flag. Uh, like I could chill for a minute. Um, but it's like a nice term. It's like a nice way to like catch ourselves without being like, yo, Nelson, you're being a jerk. Um, which is what I'm saying when I'm like, yo, you redlining right now, right? Um, but the second thing, and we don't have a great term for this, is like, if you're playing capture the flag, by making it less competitive, for some kids, you're making it less fun, right? Like the same is true, like basketball. I'm, I'm going to keep going back to the basketball example, right? Like if you're playing basketball and you've got a bunch of like people that really like playing basketball and then you go up there and you grab the ball and you're bouncing it with two hands and you're like, hey, what if you have to spin around three times before you shoot? It's like the people that like basketball are like, bro, we're playing, like we're playing basketball. Like what the hell are you doing? You're making it so much less fun. Right. And so I think like keeping in mind as we're building out this conversation around the game, how can we make games inclusive for as many people as possible and not be taking away from the parts of the game that make it so core to what they do. Right. So um, I encourage you uh, to one, introduce the idea of redlining to um, your, your staff and the people you're going to be working with. And then two, um, not let the Hufflepuff ruin the game for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the people who, who come to the table with, no, we got to be inclusive. I agree. We got to be inclusive, but it doesn't mean it has to ruin the game for other people. Right? Like I'm, I'm like calling people out. I'm like being a little bit rude, but I mean it in a really positive way. I think that camps a lot of times can lean too far into the like, we're going to make it not competitive. And it's like, it's okay for it to be competitive sometimes. My take, not everyone's take. It's okay for it to be competitive. And we don't need to ruin it for everyone. And it's, it's really magical when the people that are typically not very competitive turn up their competition, like as staff, like the staff do that. And, and when the people like me and Nelson can turn down our competitive sometimes and be a little silly on some stuff, right? Like when we can start showing some different facets of what's going on as staff, we can be more inclusive of the kids because they can see themselves in, in each other, right? Um, now, can I miss anything on, on, uh, on competition as, as we get into these games? Um, no, I think pretty much what it sounds like you're saying is it's like it's okay to have a winner and a loser as long as, like, people can win gracefully and lose gracefully. Oh, actually, great point, Nelson. You want to do the speech that you give at the end of, uh, at the end of Capture the Flag? Oh, absolutely. After I win Capture the Flag, three, three, three sessions in a row, is that what you're saying? Well, well, no, no. If you, when you're facilitating catch the flag, not when you're the, not when you're the winner. <laughs> when you're, when you're, when you're saying like, you know how in most places they don't tell you who's the winner and loser. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, all right. So you know, uh, you know how like a lot of places, a lot of times you're playing games like either at school or or like uh, or like at like a, a recreational facility, and like you'll play a game, and like there'll be like points, and there'll be like all these ways to keep track of score, and at the end they go like everybody's the winner and like it's like a tie and it's like but like in your head you're saying like no i i'm i'm looking at the amount of balls that i have versus what they have and like we we clearly have and based on the rules like we we definitely like, that happens a lot right so we uh we don't really uh do that here uh we believe that it's okay to be uh to be to have a winner it's okay um to have a loser um because the thing is uh 
that's how a lot of things work, right? A lot of things have winners and a lot of things have losers. So uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to kind of remove that from that. However, uh, it's not so much about like who wins or who loses, um, because I think that's like a, a reward that you get for playing the game, uh, whether you win or lose. It's more so about how you handle it afterwards, right? It's about uh, how you, because the thing is, uh, whether you win or lose, you still have to be a part of the community. And uh, I don't know about you, but I enjoy being a part of community with people that uh, aren't kind of like in my face about winning or uh, kind of uh, bashing me for winning as well if I'm, if I'm on the losing side. So uh, as, we, as we go throughout this, we might want to think about how, we can, how can we win gracefully, right? How can we acknowledge the fact that we have uh, our community as well and that uh, games are meant to be win and lost, but at the end of the day, it is just a game um, that we did to have fun. And then this is where I start pandering the crowd. I go like this. And you know how grown-ups sometimes don't trust kids? We can trust you, right? We can trust you, right? All right, let me tell you who won. Um, I'm, a big, I'm a big crowd panderer, big crowd panderer, trying to get that, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, all right, uh, that, was, that was great. Um, see, I'm going to share my screen again. Boop, boop. Boop. All right, Aang and, uh, and um, Zoot, Zoot, what's his name? Who's Quarius in this, in this picture again? Uh, ooh, Is it Zuko? Uh, Zuko. Yeah. Zuko, Zuko, Aang and Zuko uh, uh, battling out. Um, let's talk. Let's talk some mechanics here. Um, when we think about mechanics, what we're talking about are the the little pieces that get added up to um, to play um, to be able to play these games, right? So, what are some of your favorite mechanics in in games that you've seen? One right here, cap, uh, uh, rock paper scissors. Actually, do you mind if I ask that I tweak that question, Jack? When when I had you think about uh when I had you think about what specifically made that like special thing, uh when we when, a very when we started, when we're like, uh, think about something that you really enjoyed. Um, what specifically about it made it so special? Like what what specifically was like, I want to come back, share, like what what was that that made it so special? Like was it like what made it fun? Like what is the actual action that you did that you were like, I'm having fun right now? And again, this is one of those times where you're just uh, gonna share. Like, if you have something that you might think you could have kind of maybe could say, just start talking, and, and we're gonna we're gonna work with that. For our like camp um, camp Olympics, we have like cheer offs that um, are like the staff will write cheers based on popular songs that kids would like know the tune to, but to the theme of whatever the story we're using is. Okay, so like. So, so like the mechanic there might be uh, the singing, like that's mm -hmm. the action that we're doing, right? Everyone's having a lot of time singing the songs and like the, 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 the overlay around it is uh, the theme that you have going on, right? That's like, we're singing uh, uh, roll, roll, roll your boat, but instead it's to the theme of, I don't know, uh, 2000s hip hop and we're singing it to the theme of Lil Johns and the Yin Yang Twins and we're going, yeah, roll, roll, roll your boat, gently, all that stuff, right? Maybe that's what it is, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I love that. Make up a cheer. I love like perfect mechanic. And then you throw the story out. I love that. What else? What else? Give me, come on. Give, you, you, get, you get the idea. You've made up games before. Come on, give us some mechanics that, that you, you bottle together when you're making up games. Um, one, of, one of my favorite uh, all camp games that we play is um, equilateral triangle, where everyone picks two other people in the circle and then everyone's running around and everyone has two different people they're trying to make an equilateral triangle with and after enough running around you can read the room but someone will scream freeze and if you've made your equilateral triangle you just like celebrate like nobody's business and if you don't you like dramatically mourn the loss of your equilateral triangle and like the goofy nature of that of like it's a running around game and it's a comedy game is magnificent. So, so what I'm hearing is kind of like four mechanics bundled together. One is running around, two is trying to make a triangle, three is freeze, and four is some form of strange celebration or failure, right? So you could bundle, we could bundle that, we could bundle those, some number of those four, with a million other mechanics, right? Let's drop, make an equilateral triangle 
and add rock, paper, scissors, right? So you do rock, paper, scissors. When you win, you yell like mad. When you lose, you, you whine like a, like a baby, right? Same, same, same mechanic. And then add, um, uh, make a group and a cheer. So now you go out and you do rock, paper, scissors. You build, once you've got five people that have joined your, your posse, then you're going to go make up a cheer. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the point of what I'm trying to say here as we get into these mechanics is when we I want us to not think about games as static things that we have to just use and think about them as a, a bunch of building blocks that when we package them together, we can use them. And then when we realize that something's not working, we can get rid of a, one of those building blocks and add a different one. Right. So that's the point of thinking about mechanics. I think y'all get it. We're gonna we're gonna move um, we're gonna move into into the story of um, the story section. And um, when when we talk about story, what we're talking about is um, you know what's happening. But sometimes I find it hard. Like we'll come up with a theme, right? It's like Pokemon. That's like a cool theme, but there's no story, right? Or um, 2000s hip hop. Actually, I'm going to make Nelson do 2000s hip hop uh, makeup in a second. So let's do 2000s hip hop is the theme, right? And I want to make up a story. And when we start thinking about making up a story, um, you, some of you may have taken like some, some very basic creative writing classes. And a lot of times what they use, um, and I'm saying basic because that's as far as I ever got. So maybe y'all got like uh, much further than I did. But um, they talk about a, a thing called cow, character obstacle want, right? So you start with who's a character in the story, what do they want, and then what's an obstacle for them to get there, right? So character, obstacle, want. Um, Nelson, the theme is 2000s hip hop. Um, I'm actually gonna give you the character as well, um, which is that Patrick here on the, uh, on the stage is, is the character. And um, I would like, for you to tell us what the beginning story of an all camp activity might be. Cool. Do we know what the activity is or am I making that up to? Nah, you, we, we could might make that up later, but we aren't there yet. All right, cool. Bet. All right. 2000 and South Patrick is the main character and character app school. Uh, of course. All right. Uh, Pat in the hat. As is, is his stage name has come to our camp. He is. Uh, he's a very shy, conscientious person, but he is also a very popular music mogul up in Canada, <laughs> uh, specifically uh, British Columbia, right? Uh, and Pat in the Hat has come all the way down to the States um, to find the next big breakout uh, talent show act here. And he heard that our camp was the place to go, right? We got so much talent. And what do you, you guys think? We got some talent. All right. Yeah, yeah. We definitely got some talent here at our camp. Uh so Pat's here, he's here on, he's looking for the next, uh, he's looking for the next all camper band to perform at his festival um, called Pat and the Hat Cella um, up in the British Columbia. However, he, 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 what he likes is he likes 2000s hip hop. So he's gonna, he's gonna, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do a little bit of research first. We're gonna have to figure out what one, what is 2000s hip hop, right? So you might've been born in 2000, right? You, you, right? you might've been born 2000 and that's a compound sentence right there. Um, uh, so uh, we're gonna right, whoa, have to figure whoa. that out. That's good. We're good. That's the, that's the, Boom. that's the story stem. That's a great beginning, right? We've got a character. They've got an obstacle. They've got a want. And then they've got a, uh, and an obstacle or uh, an obstacle to get in the way, which is they want to find the best 2000s hip hop um, uh, like uh, act, but the campers don't know what 2000s hip hop is. So now, really quick, um, I need I need somebody that's willing to just try something for me. Anybody, raise your hand if you if you're willing. Anybody, anybody. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go, Marissa. You're quick with your hand. Marissa, I need you to tell me in 30 seconds what the all camp activity is going to be for Pat in the Hat, Pat in the Hat Cella um, that we might be uh, engaging in. Oh, great. Yeah. So, um, 
Oh no, you uh, you went muted. Oh, now you're back. Oh, am I back? Okay, so we are hosting a uh, our own Pat in the Hat Chella at camp as a preview as our own like Eurovision sort of contest happening. So all of the cabins get to learn about different songs and we're having an all Pat in the Hat Chella throwdown um, where they are getting to um, sing and act out. Costumes are a huge plus. They really need to get into character and they are performing for Pat in the Hat um, at Camp Pat in the Hat Chella contest. Um, as an evening, as an evening activity. Yeah, that's, that's the move. Oh, let's go. So what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing you say is basically the mechanics are gonna be that there's gonna be a couple of stations around camp in some way that are gonna be made, like, uh, like run by some, some counselors, maybe some CITs. We don't know yet how our camps are all structured, but I'm guessing we got a couple extra people that can run some stations. As a cabin, you're gonna go around to the different stations you're gonna be able to get dressed up if you need to. There's gonna be a costume station. There's gonna be, um, Nelson is gonna be dressed up as an old man and he's gonna be telling you about what the 2000s have been done like. And uh, there's gonna be some kind of something going on there. Um, and you're gonna go around, you're gonna be able to maybe make some posters. You're gonna be able to get taught a dance. Bailey's gonna teach you a dance um, at one station, whatever, right? There's gonna be the station. And then at the end, you're gonna to come together and put on, a quick show. Everybody's going to get one minute to do whatever. And then Pat in the hat is going to choose who is the next big star. Who gets to wear the hat? Who gets to wear the hat? See, nothing's better at the story part than I. Um, <laughs> all right. See, that's the, that's the, that's how it is. And, and so the same could be true. Like um, character off school want, you could go um, there's a, uh, uh, the, the queen of a, of a castle is um, trying to bring peace to the land, but that's what she wants. But the obstacle is, is that there's all these monsters that are attacking and we have to figure out how to defeat the monsters, right? Like there, there it is. I mean, every video game you've ever played is the same thing, right? It's like, there's a character, they want some shit. And then uh, progressively, there's more and more things that get in your way. Right. So like, right. That, but for me, when we break it down like this, I don't know about y'all, but a lot of times I feel like a lot of people want to have like their, they want to weigh in on how like all camp activities go. And if you're like me, you're like, yeah, but you don't get it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like a lot of people want to want to weigh in and most of them don't really get it. And there's like a few people at camp that actually understand how these things work and that there's all these mechanics and everything has to fit together. But a lot of people could weigh in and help make up the story they can put on the initial skit that leaves the game off. And then the people that actually know how to do everything can make the uh, like mechanics work for how the game actually runs, right? So um, this is a great way to get more people involved, get more people on stage and not have to um, kind of like own everything so tightly, um, you know, in, in that way. That's a problem I have where I just want only my crew to like do the thing. So I'm just admitting that that's a, a failure for me, right? Um, all right, Nelson, I need you to give us five examples on how to bring more hype. If the, if the three things are mechanic, story, and hype, I need five examples, five is a lot, of how to bring more hype to a game. Boom. All right, so first I want to just say like hype. Um, one hype is like definitely like it has like even like it's all it's, uh, it's in all caps it has like the exclamation point and like the first thing you think is like energy excitement um and things like that and i think hype is really just how do we capture interest hype is just capturing entry ca capturing interest and there's like so many more ways to do that i'm sorry Jay, there's so many more ways to do that than just yelling uh yelling definitely works <laughs> yelling definitely 100 percent works but there are a million ways to do that so i don't want anyone to feel like if that you're not like the like person that can stand up on the table um, and like get really loud, like you can also build just as much hype with like these other things that I'm gonna tell you. All right, so, but when you're when you're looking to create hype, uh, one of the most important things to do is to have a plan. Um, it sounds simple, um, it sounds easy enough, but like just have a plan. Like it doesn't have to be like this elaborate plan. It could literally just be like, as you're walking to go present the thing, start thinking about what you're gonna start with. Start thinking about what you're gonna say. 
um, before you actually get there. Um, that'll help you tenfold. You might not ever use anything that you thought about, but it'll get your headspace into the mind of like, all right, I'm about to do this like introduction to create this hype, right? So ways that you, that I create hype personally and ways that I've seen other people create hype, um, one, yelling. Being louder, being loud, absolutely for, for a lot of things will be enough. Um, two, uh, you wanna be able to find a way to build suspense. Building suspense is like pretty much like a tried and true way to get people hype, right? If you think about any trailer you've ever seen, it gives you like snippets of what you can expect. And it has like, has you like wanting more, right? That's what suspense is leaving, leaving them wanting more, right? And this is like, I've seen this done through uh, yelling about what you can expect. But I've also seen this done uh, very tactfully by being quiet, right? And asking questions and almost acting a little mysterious and like making them want to know a bit more about who you are, right? If we're, if we're talking, if we're talking, um, about uh we'll go back to like pat cella right and maybe it's like instead of like being hype and stuff like that it's like ah uh, so like this like really his guy's walking around he has like a bunch of like fancy clothing he keeps uh he keeps doing like these weird dances and i'm not really sure why he's here yet um but i'm wondering like somebody might have told me that he was like this music mogul that like came and might be looking for like the next star and he might be bringing all these like famous celebrities through like I, maybe i think i heard t swift and like uh i don't know yet though like like that's that kind of suspense can also be just as hype um the next thing you want to think about is uh creating a character just create any kind of character doesn't matter who it is and and all right so create the character right and that comes in having a plan create a character um for pokemon you might be like Ash, Brock, Misty, you might be uh, whoever uh, for uh, uh, Harry Potter, you might just be like a person from Gryffindor, a person from uh, uh, Slytherin, you might be just, uh, you might be Harry Potter himself, themselves, you might be Hermione, you might be, uh, I don't know, uh, Bella Lestrange or whoever it is, um, right? But also uh, a good part about characters that I think also brings a lot of hype is create a character that like just does not belong in the world that you're doing just does not that uh, yeah you, uh jack just wrote in me stretching my harry potter knowledge i have zero harry potter, zero <laughs> harry, potter harry potter knowledge um so uh something i've actually done and seen is that i will just throw like random uh characters from other things into harry potter so i think somebody told me to be dumbledore and i showed up as little john i don't it's like i i don't know anything about harry potter that's perfectly fine but then uh, then uh, this next one, right? This next one is going to be also uh, part of the character and also, I guess, 4.5. Uh, get committed. As soon as you like lock into that character, as soon, don't break character. Don't, because that's going to be, that's part of the hype is that kids will 100% and also you'll find that staff will also do it. Uh, they find interest. The more committed you are, the more into the character are, the more like weird nuancey details you add to your character, the more intrigue you build, the more suspense you build, the more questions you get asked, right? So when I, when I was at Little John character, everyone was like, that's not in, in Harry Potter. And I was like, you haven't seen me. I'm in the eighth book or whatever it is, um, right? It hasn't come out yet, right? Well, it doesn't matter what it is, right? Uh, and like that also can be like, because it, it, it breaks the norm, it breaks the status quo. It, it creates a uh, it creates unexpected, right? And that's also the hype. And again, I'm gonna keep referring to like movies, video games, all that stuff, right? When you actually get to the thing, um, you're always waiting for that twist. You're waiting for that turn. You're waiting for that like, all right, we got the story, we got the exposition, but where's it gonna pop off, right? When it, when is he gonna move out of the? the I'm still stretching my Harry Potter analogy. <laughs> what is he gonna actually move out of the out of the basement and start uh, Le, Lingardia Leviosa, right? When, when is that gonna come? When is that gonna come? All right. And then this last one, this last one. Uh, which is like, uh, it'll make it easy for you to continue the hype, right? Because uh, after a while, uh, just based on attention spans, people will lose interest. And like some people really stick to your character. If you're, if you're like this person, they're really going stick to stick to you. They're going to want to hang out with you. They're going to want to learn more about you and engage. However, if you get others involved when you're like creating the hype and like that'll, that'll just get that buy-in, that'll get that entry. Um, so if you're, if you're the one doing the presentation and, and building the hype and creating the story, right? Uh, you might want to start asking the crowd some questions, right? You might want to call on uh, some of your counselors and be like, and say like, oh, is that, is that, uh, is that uh, Dr. Dre in the background that I see? Is that, is that, is that, is that Snoop? Is that Snoop over there? You know what I'm saying? 
and then and then your counselors will, and then the, and then your counselors will come in and they'll like I don't know they might like uh, start playing the piano or whatever whatever uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg in that scenario do or whatever uh, the uh, the side quest character might do. And here's a tip to this: is that like it doesn't actually have to be spontaneous because like not everybody is uh, just like on the fly able to do that right before the hand that goes and have a plan. Uh, you can just be like, hey, so uh, I'm about to go do this like weird stuff up here. And I'm going to ask you this question. And I just need you to have like an even crazier answer for it. And then, and like, that's it. You don't have to tell them what they're going to do. You don't have to like be specific. Like if you want to, you can definitely do that. But you can definitely just use that for them and be like, hey, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to call on you at some point. And all I need you to do is just like play into whatever question I have. And that's it. So those things right there are going to be have a plan, uh, yell, be loud, build suspense, create a character, get committed to that character, and then let people know their jobs, right? Let people know how you can get them involved. Um, you can also get campers involved. Um, you can get just about anybody involved in these things. Boom. And let other folks know, let, like, like if you're going to be the one designing the games at camp, you're going to be the people running the, the all camp activities let other folks in on this the most like let them in on how they can help build the hype more right like get do a, a eight minute training during um lunch one day during staff training about this like like you know what i'm saying like because if you're the one facilitating the game you're going to be if you're like me at peak stress level at the moment when hype is supposed to be the highest and for some people, when you're at peak stress level, it's hard to be hyped. And for some people, me, at peak stress level, it's hard to remember the rules. So like I can be loud and go wiling out at, and right before the game, and I got to have written down on a piece of paper, what the hell am I supposed to say to come next? You know what I'm saying? Um, but if I have let everybody else in that I need to, I let a few people in the most, like I let Nelson in, and I let um, Daniel in the most. So they know the most about what's going to come next. They can help me out. And then all the rest of the staff know that their job is to come correct in some kind of weird costume, to come with a character, because the person at the front of the room leading the all, the all camp activity, their character is important. But when Nelson was little Jolliver and he was running the wand shop, he was just, he, he wasn't a real, he, he was a minuscule piece of a capture the flag game but he was the thing that the most kids remembered because he had taken it to a weird level right you know what i'm saying he wasn't leading anything he was just a random person the same is true like when you're gonna ask in a second we're gonna we're gonna make up some some station um like the same is true like when you ask people to to lead a station right what i like to do is give them a a like quarter sheet of paper that says the name of the station the theme of the activity and then like what's supposed to happen and say, do you want me to help you come up with a character? Because if you've got people that are running, let's say you're like, for example, a lot of camps have dunk tanks. I've never, I've never had a dunk tank, but a lot of camps have dunk tanks, right? You like throw the ball and it hits something. And if it hits something, somebody drops in. We make up our own dunk tanks by just, if you throw the, the ball at the target and it hits the target, you just dump a bucket of water on somebody same idea, same game, right? If that person that's getting the water dunked on them and the person who's like, maybe like giving the kids their ball um, are uh, in some kind of weird character because it's alien themed, all of a sudden it's just a, so much better of an activity, right? And you all know that, but I, a lot of times the 18 year olds, the 16 year olds, whoever is running these activities, they've never done this before. So you tell them you're running a made up dunk take station they're like, okay, I've got to show up. I got to give the kid the ball. Got it. Right. But when you're like, you're going to make up a character and you're going to, the point of all you need to do is make this station as fun as possible. And when kids win, they get a ticket. So all you, everything else doesn't matter. Fun ticket. Fun ticket. That's what you got to do. That's your job. Just make it fun and give them a ticket right? Like then they can start to be creative because they know the box that they're playing, right? Um, all right. Here's what I want to do in a second. We're going to design in breakout room a carnival. Um, and uh, the theme of the carnival 
Nelson, I need a theme for the, actually, come on. Who's got a good theme? I need a theme for the carnival. It can be a bad theme too. We'll take three ideas and then Nelson will pick the one he likes the most. Pressure. Hannah like Sue, you got an idea. Like I can really... tell in your face you got it. You got an idea. Sunshine has an idea. They're about to I was going to say it can be based off of different eras. Oh, eras. Okay. Eras, different different time eras. Sunshine, what do you got? Um, the theme could be obscure Crayola color names obscure and like ridiculously named colors. Ridiculously named colors. Okay, I need one more idea. Bailey, I feel like you got one in the back of your head, but I could be wrong. Let's go superheroes. Superheroes. Okay, classic. Nelson, I need you to pick eras, extreme colors, superheroes. Uh, we're going with eras. Eras. Okay, we're going eras. I'm going to make, um, here's what I'm going to make. I am going to make three breakout rooms. One second. And what you're going to do is in your breakout room, you're only going to have one or two other people. And I'm going to put this. Um, okay. You're going to make up a name and then type up how it's going to work like you would hand to the 16-year-old that's going to run the station. And then you're going to ask them, do you need help making up a character? You don't have to make up a character on this. Um, what stations can happen? Now, the stations in this carnival, here's how carnivals work in my mind when I say carnival. I mean that there's going to be some amount of space, a soccer field, a soccer field and a, um, like a barn, like, or a gym, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a very clearly defined amount of space and then some number of stations that the kids can walk to individually. So they'll probably go with their friends but they don't have to be super, they don't have to like go with their cabin, right? So when you get to the station, there's gonna be one person there or two people there that are leading the station. You're gonna do some kind of activity and you might, you, if you want, you can get some, let's actually, you know what? And when you do the activity, you're gonna get between one and $5 of fake money. That's what's gonna happen at the station. Really right? quick, have you, uh, real quick, thumbs up if you ever played Mario Party. All right. If you, if, uh, if for those who play Mario Party, help the people out. But uh, a carnival is pretty much is if you took a bunch of Mario Party mini games and then put them into the middle of a field, and then okay. have them walk around and go play the mini games. And the and the um so the theme is eras and the like supplies you have are kind of like standard camp supplies. So we're not going to try and spend like a bunch of money. You know what I'm saying? You got balls, you got cones, you got paint, you got markers, you got crayons, you got sticks, you got tape all that kind of stuff, but don't, you know, we're not spending, uh, we're not buying a bounce house. Does that make sense? And your goal is in the next five minutes with your, um, in your small group to add five stations. So we're going to end with 15 stations in there. Ready, set, eras. Boom. I'll be honest. One second. Oh. Oh, and we're freaking back. Uh, two things that I love. One, these are awesome stations, and we'll keep this, this like, that will stay there, and you can access it forever, so you can go cheat, like, steal everybody else's stations in the middle of the summer when, if you're like me, and you're, like, putting on, like, your eighth carnival of the summer, and you're just, like, Oh, fuck. What am I supposed to do again? Um, Bailey had a cool idea like three months ago. Well, let's go back and take a look at that. Um, and then um, two, what I love is that Nelson and I both, when we thought about eras, we're think we were both like, yeah, like disco, 90s. And uh, y'all went like all kind of different eras, which I, I loved even more. Um, so uh that's uh that's cool um i'm gonna leave those there and i'm not gonna ask any questions about that because we're we're running out of time um and i hope that that was helpful to you to me the reason why i um like coming to these kind of things is i get to steal everybody else's ideas like that's 
the, the biggest trick. Um, Nelson, you told me you had three ideas on how to make in starting activities and giving instructions more effective. Cool. All right, got? First one, the first one uh, for giving instructions one, it's uh, in my opinion, the worst part about all kind of activities is like just getting everybody on the same page and also arguably the most important part about um, all camp activities because like if we actually don't understand what we're doing it all that hype all that story that we just built um, all those logistics don't really matter because no one no one knows what they are so uh, the first thing you want to make sure that everybody is doing is just like make sure everybody is listening right I think I think oftentimes uh, what will happen is people will want to and I and I am a big uh, I oftentimes will forget this too um, because I get I'm a method actor so I got to get into it um, so <laughs> uh right? People forget that sometimes the character can create confusion around rules. So you want to make sure everybody's listening, right? Raise, you can do that. Um, just get uh, higher than everybody else or have them get lower than you. Um, having everybody sit down is like just a tried and proven tactic to get everybody quiet and kind of focused on whoever is not sitting down, um, right? Also, it's okay to break character for the rules, right? If you're, if you're in this like super, if you're doing tea time with the queen and you're, uh, you're playing, I don't know, the Duchess of York, um, right it's okay to break character um to explain that uh everybody is only going to be able to get like two crackers a piece because you want to make sure that kind of information is okay um so definitely you want to make sure everybody is listening and then you're going to pick the three most important rules you're going to pick the three most important rules and you're going to say those first like doesn't whatever those are right for capture the flag if it's uh when you get tagged you go back to your side if you pick up a if you pick up a ball or a noodle you get points and if you uh if you get tagged, you have to go to the middle, right? Those might be the three most important points. Like there are a bunch of other rules that happen and and capture the flag, but like to be honest, the, the other rules probably are like not as important and like only really apply to like a little bit of people. So find the three most important rules that everyone definitely needs to be aware of and say those first. Um, and then after that, you're gonna give all those like edge cases. You'll you'll talk about. Um, if you like, you can't carry two two flags at the same time or like what less flag guarding look like, right? All those things that like are like kind of important, but like not really. And it's like really gonna like, someone might like complain about it a little bit later and then you'll just explain to them in the moment, um, but they're not the three most important. Um, after you go over the edge case rules, right? Say the three most important rules again. <laughs> again, like I, like there's usually, usually any, any game or activity that you do can be broken down into three steps um like capture the flag has a bunch of stuff you can do that um you can do that for basketball um basketball might be if you score you you get points if you get the ball in the basket you get points um if the ref calls a foul uh the ref is automatically right and we're gonna listen to the ref and uh if you uh double dribble like that's the rule we're gonna put on double dribble which looks like uh bouncing the ball with two hands then it's the other team's ball those are the most important rules there's probably a bunch of other stuff that you can say after that but those are the three most important so say the rules first do all the other stuff in the middle uh you can go back in character and then go back to those three most important rules when you end to make sure that everyone's on the same page and the last thing I, that i think i like to do um is just give time for questions and like honestly uh a lot of the times the questions aren't like are like super specific to like one person and that's okay but like it will, uh, what I think is the important person about uh, asking questions is it alleviates a lot of like anxiety that is built up around the rules um, that you can sometimes just like kind of nip in the butt right away. Um, but here's the trick is you just keep them limited. I say three questions only. I say like any other questions you have, you can ask your counselor out there or you can ask me before we start. And you know what happens nine times out of 10? Nobody has any more questions. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird how like, when you say, does anyone have questions? There's like a million. And then like, you want to like, all right, we're going to go play. But if you want to say and ask questions, you can definitely do that. And when they had that choice to make, they're like, I'd rather just go play the game. So, uh, so again, like, right. So make sure everybody is listening. That's the most important part. It is okay to break character for that. Uh, pick the three most important rules, say them first, then say all the edge case rules. And then say the three most important rules again to make sure everybody has them. And then ask them, ask a few questions and just start the game just start the game because the important part is, is the playing and the fun. The rules are the boring part. I got two bonus tips for instructions. First one, type up what's going to happen and what is okay for everyone to know about. Print it out and give it to the kids before, like put it on the table at dinner. If you play a game at night, give it to them 
um, at rest hour in their cabin and they can read it and build some hype around it. You know what I'm saying? Like you can do that. Second one, I like to try and do the rules with one other person and one of us plays the like most uh, like outrageous version of a character. And then one of us plays the kind of like, like uh, kind of boring version of a character, right? So like that way you can do the rules. Like, let's say I'm introducing everything. I'm explaining everything. Then I can be like, yo, Nelson, uh, what I miss? Yo, Misty, what I miss, right? Like whatever Nelson's character is. And then Nelson can, can make sure I, I like hit the things I'm supposed to hit. Or another thing Nelson likes to do to me is we're doing, he, cause he knows I like to do that and I'll call on him. And then he just talks in gibberish. And so he just goes off in gibberish and then I'm supposed to translate what he said to everybody else, right? So uh, just, just keep in mind, but that still helps me because it gives me the three seconds of Nelson's gibberish to think about what I had might been, had not done said, right? So um, those are my two tips, type it up and give it out. And then to do it with one other person that also understands the rules so they can help you. Um, listen, we'll stick around for a minute. We're going to stop the, the recording in a second, but just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this. You're going to kick ass this summer. Your games are going to be so fun. Your activities are going to be so fun. Remember, the big thing is, one, have a story. Two, bring some hype. Three, have some good mechanics. And you're freaking ready to rock and roll. Everything else will, will take care of itself. Um, you're going to kick some ass this summer. Thank you so much. And we love you.